Warren Buffett is a stalwart defender of the United States and what he calls betting on America. But I take some of Warren Buffett's best advice and say, this is why you should actually be living and doing business overseas. As a big fan of Warren Buffett's myself, I take what he says as principles, not so much the idea of betting on the United States. He said that 60 years ago, when he was first starting, that you could simply uh, put your money in basically the S&P 500 and merely by what he calls betting on America, you would have become fabulously wealthy. But I ask myself, is that trend going to continue for the next 60 years? Are the conditions in the United States or in Canada or in Australia or in the UK the same thing they were back 60 years ago? And for me, most importantly, is the level of competition the same? And that's pretty easy to answer. The answer is no. There was no Dubai. There was no Kuala Lumpur. There was no any Central Eastern Europe where you could go and you would want to put your money or you would want to live 60 years ago, let alone 30 years ago in many cases. The number of places that are competing for investment dollars, competing for bodies, competing for talent is unparalleled compared to when Warren Buffett took over Berkshire Hathaway. So I wanted to go through six of Warren Buffett's best leadership strategies to the idea of you living overseas, going where you're treated best, and keeping more of your money by paying less tax so that you can invest more back into your business. And the first rule of Warren Buffett is buy with good leadership. So good leadership matters, and having good leaders of a company matters, as well as in a country. Do you see good leaders in the West, and do you believe your vote counts? What I would say a lot of us see is politicians who are fanning the flames of folks who feel like they're not part of society, who feel like they haven't gotten what they're supposed to, saying it's your fault for building a business and they're gonna not only use it against you personally, and there's gonna be more and more social unrest against you. We've already started to see that during the pandemic, but they're gonna use that as an excuse to raise your taxes more and more. Now, Warren Buffett would say, hey, you're still gonna be an investor no matter how high tax rates are, but why would you wanna go back to the days of 50, 70, you know, even 90% tax rates, particularly on investments when you've already worked so hard and particularly when there's somewhere else to go. So if you don't believe the leadership where you're living is doing a good job, that's a sign, just like you wouldn't invest in that company with bad leadership, why would you invest your time and your money into a country with bad leadership when there were other options? Now the second piece of Warren Buffett advice is you're gonna have a hard time getting ahead if you buy at the wrong price. This to me speaks that you know, if you're 70 years old, you don't have the same impetus to go where you're treated best that someone who's 20, 30, or even 40 does. Now we've had a number of clients at Nomad Capitalist who are even in their 80s who are saying, we just don't like it here anymore. We wanna get a better deal. But if you are moving to the US or Canada or to Australia now, with the kind of policies they have, with the weak leadership, with the high tax rates, with the endless regulations, with the finger pointing at people who are successful, you're not getting the best deal. You may be buying into the brand that a Western country put out decades ago, the kind of country that Warren Buffett talks about in his 60 years of historical returns, but that's not what you're getting now. We have to realize, what are we buying into now? Well, if you're 25 years old and you're just starting your business in one of these Western countries now, that's kind of the same thing as moving there because you have the choice not to live there at all. We've had a number of guys in their early 20s who are making multi-millions per year. They call and say, hey, I want to move to Dubai. And we'll say, okay, well, there's actually Italy works and Greece works and Panama works and you know, Thailand works. And they can choose from any number of places that nomad capitalists can help them move and help them lower their taxes. There's plenty of people who are just starting in their business careers, the early years, and they're already doing well. And they realize, I'm paying way too much. I'm not buying at a good price. I'm buying at the wrong price if I decide to stay in my country. And so the best time to decide that is in your early 20s. But even if you're 30 or someone like myself who's you know closer to 40, you still have many of your best earning years ahead of you. I mean, Warren Buffett at my age had a net worth of, I think, about $30 million. And look at him now. I mean, the potential you have, if you still have many years ahead of you, you have to make sure you're not going to buy at the right price. And so Singapore as a country has raised their price to get in in terms of what is required to immigrate there. So depending on how much money you have now, you may want to choose a place that's more open to people who are up and coming, right? But at least the countries that are raising their prices like Singapore have offered value. Western countries are living off of their brand and you're buying in at the wrong price. Now the third lesson from Warren Buffett is confusing revenue growth with a successful business. 
Tax revenues in the U.S. are at an all-time high, but what do you get? We recently talked about how in some parts of the U.S., health care is at the same level of Sudan, literally, the country where the U.S. Embassy airlifts themselves out and, unlike other countries, leaves their citizens to fend for themselves. And so just because your country's revenues are going up does not mean that the business is more successful. Western countries are more and more in debt. They're in worse and worse fiscal health. And you may say, hey, what does that matter to me? It matters that they're going to raise your taxes eventually, and they're probably going to close off some of the avenues for you to leave with higher exit taxes. They're going to make it harder to give up your citizenship. They're going to make it harder to leave, give up your tax residence. And so don't confuse revenue growth. Hey, more stuff is going on in my country with this is a successful country. The fourth Warren Buffett principle is investing in a company without a sustainable advantage. Now, this is the advantage that Warren Buffett has talked about in his six decades of being an investor, is the U.S., again, didn't have that much competition. I mean, even after World War II, there were really not that many other places that you could go. And even after the dust settled on that, you still had just a handful of Western countries. I mean, Spain is still one of the world's largest economies, largely by default. But look at what's happening with the BRICS. You have countries like Indonesia, the fourth largest population. You have places in Western Africa that are starting to get things together. You have South American countries that are trying to come together and be bigger players. The advantage of the U.S. and the advantage of Western countries that have just kind of had a stranglehold on things for those six decades is changing, and I believe very strongly will not last for the next six decades. I'm not saying it ends tomorrow or that it ends with a thud, but over time you will be the frog in the boiling pot of water if you believe that Western countries have this unassailable advantage, the moat, as Warren Buffett calls it, that moat is getting more and more dry every year. Now, the fifth Warren Buffett principle is avoid leverage. It's very hard to go out of business if you don't have debt. Peter Lynch, another legendary investor, said you basically deserve the world's MVP award if you can bankrupt a business that doesn't have any debt. And yet, look at Western countries. They are laden with debt. A place like Singapore has no net debt. And so they decided to be fiscally responsible. And look at the results. Their tax system is extremely low for money that you earn in Singapore. And they can even say the money that you're not earning in Singapore while you're living here, we're just going to leave that alone. And so you can cut your tax rate by, in many cases, 70 to 80 percent by moving to a place like Singapore. Obviously, there are other countries you can move and you could cut your tax rate by 100 percent. But the point is leverage kills businesses and leverage will eventually kill countries. The economy may not tank, but they'll just say, hey, your tax rate's no longer 39 percent. Now it's 49 percent. And at what point are you going to say it's not worth it anymore? You may lose millions of dollars over your lifetime just because those tax rates went up to pay for the leverage the government took out because no one else wants to pay the bill and they'll stick you with it. And the sixth and final Warren Buffett principle is don't make life any harder than it has to be. This is where Warren Buffett says, don't try and jump over a seven foot bar thinking that you know, it's any, it makes things any better than stepping over the one foot bar. Like don't be, make things difficult. And when you're trying to run around in your country looking on December 27th for tax deductions or whenever your tax year ends, you're looking for tax deductions, you're doing all kinds of inorganic stuff, you're putting certain expenses on the top line or the bottom line, Stop doing all that and just go to a place where you can run your business and your life is less stressful because you have an easier or even no tax return to file. You're not keeping track of all kinds of random stuff the government wants you to. You don't have all the regulations in, in your life. How many people in Western countries spend how much time on compliance every year for their businesses and filing their taxes just to stay in league with the government? When you could go to other countries where that stuff is so, so much easier or, again, even doesn't exist. You're not getting extra points because your taxes are really hard to file, and on top of that, you're paying a lot of them. And so if you could go to any of the tax-free countries that Nomad Capitalist helps people move to, and you could make your life so much easier, that being organic would, in my opinion, lead to greater and greater business and personal growth for you because you're going to stop doing things that you're doing only to avoid extra compliance. So Nomad Capitalist helps people figure out how do I legally move myself and my business from where it is now to a place where it's treated much, much better. How do I reincorporate? How do I move my employees? How do I handle you know, employees around the world? Where do I live? Where does the business live? Like, How do I simplify all this stuff? And it's probably not just moving to one jurisdiction. You probably want things in a few different jurisdictions if you want to make your life as easy as possible and get as much money back in your pocket as possible to reinvest in your business. And so the moat that Western countries have has gone away. You can take advantage of that. Nomad Capitalist helps people do that. And over time, you will have millions, if not tens of millions of dollars of extra cash in your pocket by realizing that the sustainable advantage you thought was what made you successful 
is actually not what makes you successful. It's you who makes you successful and you can accomplish that anywhere you want.